We are your home theater and AV questions answered. This is AV Rant. Want your home theater or AV question answered by Tom and Rob? Send it to question at avrant.com. Welcome to AV Rant. I'm Tom Antry and I'm here with Rob H. John on Facebook. John has a Denon AVR X4000, yay, but he would really like to be able to use his two channel integrated amp when listening to two channel only music. Okay. What we suggest is a way to wire it all up to work together. Uh, does your two channel only amplifier, I mean, integrated amp, have a way of taking two channels in and amplifying your front two channels no matter what? Because it it must it must have two channel analog inputs. Then I would set the volume. I would it, set the volume knob on that thing, and then take the volume knob off, and never touch <laughs> it again, and then use it just like it's an amp for your speakers. Good. And and therefore, what you'll be doing is taking the uh, front, left, and right preamp outputs from your AVR X four thousand. That's right. So you would use the front, left, and right preamp outputs and feed them into your two-channel integrated amp. And now your two-channel integrated amp is simply acting as an amplifier That's for right. your front, left, and right speakers, no matter what you're playing from your AVR X4000. Now, I could go one step further, which is let's say you have a turntable. And the only way you're ever going to use that turntable is with your two-channel stereo integrated amp. Right. You could plug the turntable directly into the stereo integrated amp rather than into your X4000 because then you don't have to turn the X4000 on when you're listening to the turntable. The only downside there is, do you use a subwoofer when you're listening to two-channel music? Because if you also use a subwoofer when listening to two-channel music, you should feed everything into the X4000 uh, again, still doing preamp outputs from the X4000 to the two-channel integrated amp. It's really just acting as an yeah. amplifier at yeah. that point. That's what I would do. I would just have it yeah. use it as an amplifier. I thought that the X4000 had a phono input, didn't it? Doesn't it, it does. I thought yeah. it does. Oh, it could. It's just sometimes people... They, they want to do it a specific way. Yeah, yeah just, just. they only do the integrated amp for two-channel. They don't the use the subwoofer. The key that you need to worry about here, John, is the volume control. This is your problem mm -hmm. right here. You want to set it to a certain level now it, and then like never touch it again. And it's very important because you're going to calibrate based on whatever volume level your integrated amp is at because it's going to be powering your main speakers. So you need to set it to whatever it is. And it doesn't necessarily mean reference all like all the way up to the top some of these amplifiers will start to integrate amps will start to clip or make some sort of noise or add distortion or you know raise it should the, be the noise pretty button. high though should, should be, be pretty close to the zero db. yeah i mean i would put it to zero db and test it and make sure everything sounded okay yeah. you know i go up to my speakers make sure i'm not hearing a hum or anything like that and if zero db, db works then take the volume knob off and don't let anybody touch it ever yeah and then just feed everything through the way that Rob was saying. It, I mean, it just basically makes your integrated into an amp. And if mm -hmm. there's a reason, I mean, I mean, if there's with with the option to then connect two channel only sources to just the integrated amp, if you if you so desire. Yes, but you then have you'll have option. to change your volume. <laughs> I know. Uh, at that point, because so it, it'll sure be know, very loud. Make sure you know where it's set. For... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, hopefully, it has a digital readout, or you're going to be. Mm. You know, white out is your friend. If it's just got a knob, nail polish, right? Nail, nail polish, polish, white out, something like that. Just make a streak right there, and make sure you set it up, and then just realize you're going to be always an agonizing over the whole thing. Like, is it set right? <laughs> I feel like it's a little loud. I feel like it's a little quiet. Let me check it again. Maybe I'll adjust it by point zero 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 one centimeters. And that's probably got a name. All right. Anyways, uh, about the cleaning of tweeters. This is also from John. Mm. Can you do it? Should you do it? How do we do it? <laughs> he has a lot of cooking and his speakers in the same room as the grease, dust, and smoke. Should hmm. he be concerned? Uh, yeah, I guess maybe you should be concerned, but frankly, okay, so... Well, do you have a grill on your speakers? Yeah, I I would. I would this at this point. Yeah, no question. I would put a. I would. Ha I would want a speaker grill because that'll help. That will help. I wouldn't worry so much about the smoke. Uh, grease, though, is a is a consideration. I mean, if you're doing a lot of frying, and anybody who's got a kitchen will know, uh, and they cook on a regular basis will know that your hood vent and the the the. Uh, that metal grate that's usually up there, it gets a sort of yellow. F 
sticky-ish film in it, and that's grease. That's grease from cooking. And uh, it's terrible to get off. I mean, it's really, really hard to get off. You have to soak things in a degreaser, usually hot water. You got to scrub it. I mean, it's not impossible, uh, but it does take chemicals, and it usually takes a little bit of elbow grease. Not always. If you have a pressure washer, that makes your life a lot easier. That being said, I don't see any way that you're going to be able to clean your tweeters and not damage them. So yeah, this it's is a, really tough. This is a preventative thing. So keeping your grills on is uh, about the only thing you can do. It's not like they're going to be sucking in a lot of grease towards them. So if they're not directly above like your hood vent is, then yeah, you should be okay. Yeah, I mean, they're... There is that goof off product. In fact, Infinite Gary uh, was sort of like saying that he uses that sometimes. But on I mean, you what? certainly want to uh, just on gear, anything that might because he's he's got his setup in the kitchen, which is a similar situation. I wouldn't put that stuff. So, I, I mean, if you put that stuff on your speaker, I would find some place that is never well, going mean, to be you, seen and then try. Yeah, I would that. never spray it directly on the speaker. You you want to spray a little bit onto a cloth. Yeah. And then maybe know. dab the club, but you'd have to be so because goof off will take glue off of things, and there is That's almost how, when always I glue had... holding the <laughs> perimeter of the tweeter or the driver. There's there's glue on there holding whatever attaches it to the rest of the, the speaker. The veneer so, down to the or the uh, yeah, the uh, you have to be so careful. All that stuff. I would I I would never. I'm sorry. I would never put yeah. goof off on there. I, I my wife's uh, window like fell down in her old car. It was this car she I mean, got for the, like a grand and we drove I it into the, the ground and the window like fell into the door and somebody pulled it up and <laughs> duct taped it to it and then we had like this duct tape residue all over the, the window and the right, car right, right. the window's easy you just scrape it off with a mostly you scrape it off with a yeah. razor blade but getting it off of the chrome and the everything else i i got it off it took the paint off as well it took the chrome yeah. off as well yeah. it took yeah. off everything i had raw metal when i was done with that bad boy <laughs> so i don't know about goof off i'm taking a couple of steps back with my hands up in the air like i don't know man that's a little I think sketchy the most i would do is a microfiber cloth you know a microfiber cloth maybe a little bit damp with just water for what the um, tweeter well for anything oh yeah, yeah that's delicate you know i mean yeah. that that would be about the most i might try would be a microfiber cloth yeah. the microfiber cloth's not going to do anything but just leave microfibers all over the thing if it's sticky <laughs> it's going to be stuck there and that water is not going to help at all you need a chemical and you do not put a chemical on your tweeter do not no. put a chemical on your tweeter no yeah that's a terrible so idea. just put the grill on and you know every once in a while offer a little cup of whiskey and or scotch uh and uh like a quail to the audio gods at the little altar that you will put in your kitchen near your speakers say i'm sorry please keep my speakers safe because that's about all you're going to be able to do man don't try to clean them don't do that once your question answered send it to question at avrant.com AV Rant. Now go out and listen to something.